Have you seen Ambulance? No, I have not seen it. I've heard it's like speed, kind of, maybe. Not really. All right. So this is going to be a different kind of video. This is because I haven't done a review for Ambulance. So I thought I could just sort of, sort of talk it through with you since you haven't seen it. Yet. Okay. And yeah, uh, yeah right. I thought this would be interesting. So uh, first off, are you a Michael Bay fan? Uh, I appreciate the work that he does in his lane. I don't think he's for everybody. Okay. So uh, like you like The Rock, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Armag yeah I Armageddon. I like Bad Boys. Armageddon was entertaining. <laughs> bad Boys. Yeah, Armageddon. Yeah, it's entertainment. Yeah. yeah. Bad Boys was fun. Okay. So what I like about those films is Michael Bay's camera movement a lot. And he often would like lay out tracks or use steady cams to get the camera moving all the time. And he mm -hmm. decided with Ambulance, I'm going to take that to the next level and use Ooh. FPV drones like crazy. And so throughout the entire film, the FPV drones are, I would say, make up at least 30, 40% of the shots in this movie. Really? Yeah. Oh, that sounds terrible. Yeah. And so here's the thing. There are instances where it shines and it's fascinating to watch, especially for people like us who are super into cinematography and stuff like that. They're doing things with cameras in this movie that you've never seen done in a movie before. And in that respect, okay. it's kind of interesting. Like Hardcore Henry, for instance, was like a, a movie all shot from first person perspective. It was the first action film that you really saw like that, taking it to that level of action, all shot from a POV with the GoPros and whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. Fascinating right. experiment. But by the end, it's a little bit tiresome to watch, right? And so with this, mm -hmm. Because I knew the kind of film that it was going to be based on the trailer, I decided I'm going to sit towards the back of the theater so I don't get nauseated. Yeah. Even yeah. sitting with only one row behind me. That's how far back I was. It was still mm -hmm. a bit much for me. I was still just mm -hmm. like, okay. <laughs> Christ, this is intense. <laughs> so if you all don't know, uh, the story of Ambulance is you have a couple of bank robbers who end up inside of a, uh, an ambulance that they hijack and they've got a cop in there that is dying and, and there's a, a medic inside that is trying to keep him alive okay. while they are fleeing from the police. So right. in that regard, it's kind of like speed, I guess. I mean, speed is not about okay. fleeing from the police, but keeping the, the bus above 50. Right. Yeah, so the movie is insane. Most of it takes place inside the ambulance as they're fleeing and all kinds of craziness is going down. And the movie does a lot with that very, very simple premise. And in that regard, okay. it's interesting. I mean, from the get-go, that movie just kicks off. Like, they give you this emotional hook, at least they try to, with Yahya mm -hmm. Abdul-Mateen. They give you this emotional hook mm -hmm. to get you invested in the character, and then the movie takes off, and it just doesn't stop until the end. Huh. It, it is non Stop. <laughs> My goodness me. But the FPV drone stuff, it's like there are instances, like I said, where it's really cool and it's moving between stuff and you're like, whoa, it's it's insane. But then there are other instances where you're like, I don't know why you did that. Because you know when you see sports FPV like races and stuff like that on YouTube and the camera's doing like some crazy ass shit. It's looking at stuff that you wouldn't typically look at because it's just in the mm -hmm. middle of its motion. That happens okay. a lot in this movie where it's like looking at arbitrary mm. things and I'm like, you're doing this weird camera work for no reason other than you are anticipating that the audience is getting bored of your movie. Ah, uh, so you used it as a crutch. Yes. All this being said, this might be the perfect film for this generation. Ooh, so you're talking about like two second cuts. All over the place. Maybe four at the most, maybe like four at the most. All over the place. If we're talking post Vine, uh, post Insta, post uh, TikTok generation, like TikTok especially, like where you're just yeah. constantly scrolling to the next thing because you, you got this, mm -hmm. you've been trained to have ADHD and keep ingesting data that you're not gonna use ever. That's what this movie is. It's like, I would love to say that I could appreciate the shots, only it moves on to the next one so quick. But mm -hmm. some of the stunt work combined with the camera work is fucking amazing. Mm -hmm. There's one shot where, and I knew it was real when I was watching it. There's one shot where this mm -hmm. camera, this cop car is, is like, going up over uh, some like cement concrete or whatever or rocks and it's going through the air okay and the drone goes underneath the car i'm like i don't know why i did that but it's fucking cool <laughs> like oh it, wow yeah it, i mean there's some interesting camera slash stunt work in the movie uh to say the least and so what it comes huh. down to is like, would I recommend this? I don't know if I would recommend it as a theatrical watch, unless you are very, very good against motion sickness. Like we're talking Blair Witch okay. level. Blair Witch level, you know. Uh, yeah. Or, or yeah, yeah, yeah. Cloverfield level. 
If you're really good with motion sickness, then then you'll be all right watching this. I was just about to say because there's a there's a totally different experience on watching a Michael Bay film in the theater than watching it at home. Two totally different experiences. Well, I've always been somebody that's been like, if you're going to see a Michael Bay film like Transformers or something like that, because you need that that breathing space, you need to hear the sound, mm -hmm. you need because everything is like super high octane, and and for you to be like, well, maybe this may be something. You should see at home is an interesting take as well as well as well as the TikTok take, the TikTok. Yeah, TikTok yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there, <laughs> I know you're you're maybe not necessarily a hundred percent pleased with what you saw, but you kind of sold me on just the things that you were talking about, everything from the camera movement to. Because now I'm curious, yeah. and for the simple fact that you know I know the type of filmmaker he is and and, and that full Michael Bay experience, I think I want to see it in the theater yeah. now. So let me ask you a question: How was um? Because I think Yaya is probably one of the next up when it comes to actors that's that's probably gonna be like mainstream uh talk of the town in hollywood how was his performance he was good yaya abdul mateen i like him i think he's a fantastic actor mm -hmm. ever since i first watched him i was like oh especially when i saw him in a uh, watchman i was like this dude is amazing mm -hmm. like he's pretty dope and jake gyllenhaal i've been a fan of for a while especially after i watched him in nightcrawler yeah um, nightcrawler nightcrawler yeah, 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 yeah like he is fantastic in this movie you can tell that Jake Gyllenhaal and Yahya Abdul-Mateen had a very wicked bond. That's the cool thing about this, is it felt like the set was so loose. It was so, like, okay. just chill. I think Michael Bay loves improv for whatever reason. Like, Bad Boys 2 was like two hours and 40 minutes or something like that. And I watched that with yeah. Skeeter and he's like, yeah, because they allowed too much improv to go on in the movie. That's why it's that long. Yeah. It didn't need to be two hours and 40 minutes. And so I think that this movie was definitely um, improv a lot. Like, they had... Kind of like Curb Your Enthusiasm, but with action. I think it goes on a little long, but when it's a Michael mm -hmm. Bay, you're sort of supposed to expect that, I guess. For me, the biggest, uh, most exciting part of the film was Isa Gonzalez, though. I mean, she's just she's just fun to look at. <laughs> so, like, I mean, she's good. Don't get me wrong. Michael Bay knows what you want. Yeah, yeah. don't Michael get me Bay wrong. Michael knows what you want. That's, I mean, there's she, a reason. She, yeah. For me, I'm not that familiar with her, but she, to me, she's like a Hispanic Megan Fox. I was like, yo, I'll take, I'll take more of that right there, please. I'll have, I'll have, Michael Bay has a type. I'll have seconds and thirds, please. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, but she handled herself well. I mean, she's more than just eye candy. Like, she was definitely able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jake Gyllenhaal and Yaya Abdul-Mateen in terms of the scene work and whatnot. Okay. Like, she was really, really good. And so I look forward to watching her more. It's insane. Like, there are things that happen in the movie that, you know, like, where you're about to have logic kick in, and then you go, wait, yeah, yeah. I'm watching a Michael Bay movie. Why would I even have any feelings about that? And there you go. Michael yeah. Bay is like cotton candy. Yeah. You know, you go to the carnival or you go to the fair to see the pretty lights to be entertained. And Michael Bay is the cotton candy. It has no nutritional value whatsoever. It's going to rot out your teeth if you eat too much of it. It yeah. is absolutely going to make you sick if you sit and eat too much of it as well. But boy, is it good in the moment. <laughs> I, I really want to know if Michael Bay watched this movie before it hit theaters. I want to know if he watched it in an IMAX setting, because this movie, it has IMAX blazoned across the poster because he wants you to watch it in IMAX. And I'm, there's a part of me that just wonders if Michael Bay wants to hurt the audience. Like, <laughs> there's a part of me that just is like, just, just as a little bit of conspiracy theory, because I remember he, listening to Chris Stuckman talk about the last Transformers movie that he did. And he said mm -hmm. that the aspect ratio was changing throughout the film constantly with no reason with no regard for the audience it was just constantly you know IMAX uh, 35 and then changing around all the time and it's like for what though like what's this what is this the narrative point of these changes that you're doing other than you just don't because give I can. a shit like exactly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my turn to fix Fix it in post. Yeah. <laughs> I just shoot. That's what I do. Yeah. I, I mean, for, as far weren't as... you telling me... A, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, well, weren't you telling me a story regarding, like, Anthony Hopkins, I believe, and dealing with uh, how he deals with Michael Bay in his, in his shoots... Sean Connery. When they did, uh, it was Sean the Connery. Rock. It was Sean, Sean Connery, was yeah. Sean Con weren't you telling me about Sean Connery and his interactions regarding Michael Bay and his, uh, I guess, aggressive style of shooting? So, yeah, because... You know, it's not, well, just, at the it's time, not just us, the audience. At the time that he did The Rock, I mean, Michael Bay had one movie under his belt, and that was Bad Boys. And what he was doing was based on his principles that he got from music videos, I think. And, mm. you know, Michael Bay just 
he just loved to move that camera. And uh, and back then, moving that camera meant laying down tracks because we didn't have steady cams. And then, event, and, you know, steady cams are everywhere now, and that's the easier thing to work with, and like Mobies or whatever it's called. At that time, if you wanted to get cool moving shots, you had to lay down tracks, which would take hours to get right. Because if you've ever laid down tracks, the camera will see any yes. little <laughs> any little bump, and so it takes like hours and hours to sort out. And so Sean Connery was just getting livid because Michael Bay is also really intense. Doesn't give a shit about you. He's like, I'm going to get this done and you're going to make it happen. Okay, asshole. He, he will berate you. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, not the berating part. Yeah. But, I, but I like a dude that knows what he wants and gets it done. Yeah, yeah. Sure. That's fair enough. <laughs> and, and so, yeah, what happened was Sean Connery had scheduled a, a, a meeting with the cast and crew. And he's like, we are going overtime a lot here. And so I'm going to organize. This is what we're going to do for the next two weeks of this shoot. This is how it's going to go down. Because I don't like how this is being run. The set's being run. And Michael Bay's like, mm-hmm. That's right. Everybody listening to what he's saying? Everybody listening? <laughs> <laughs> Completely oblivious that he's the one who's being spoken about. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a trip. Yeah. So to me, that's, that's, that's just a testament to, you know, it's my way or the highway yeah. and he's going to get it done. I'll have to tip him out on, on that. And obviously, you know, like Steven Spielberg is a huge fan of Michael Bay because yeah. he, he is a visual artist and I, you know, you can I have to take him in small doses, but you know, you put butts in seats. And you also said something else that's just really, it's just really important to me, and that is addressing the current generation. Um, I come from a generation where it, like dances with wolves, you know, where it's like wow. everything big, <laughs> huge, big, open, scenic, visual masterpieces, long takes. You know, I'm the Stanley Kubrick generation where each take is like three minutes long with no cuts. That ain't this generation. So, you know, Michael Bay fits in this wheelhouse very well. And I think the things that you said sound like it, it, it would be a hit. So I mean, we saw we saw how Blade Runner 2049 was received. <gasps> you know, like not a lot of people <sighs> were into it. And the, that was that had the style of what you're talking about of yester of yeah. like, you know, the <laughs> antiquated era. Good old days. Yeah. yeah, it's like <laughs> long shots, just like kind of just sitting on stuff for a while. And, and that movie's it's long too. You ever try watching the original Star Trek? It's, it's long. Yeah. I mean, because it, it was it was coming off of the hill of like uh, Kubrick's uh, 20, 2001, 2000, right? 2001 Space Yeah, 2001. Odyssey. Yeah, and that kind of like set the tone and it sets that slow tone, right? Yo, <laughs> yeah. I tried watching the original Star Trek. That movie is slow. This is what was entertaining back then. Like just yeah. Spock and, and Captain Kirk looking at this thing that they're going through. I think it's like a... <laughs> And yeah, the undocking, when they're undocking the, the, the Enterprise, it takes forever. Like there's a approach where it's like you see like the main saucer and it's just slowly going by like this viewpoint of, I guess, like the construction workers. And it's like, dang, you are really going to sit there and watch us walk the whole damn ship out, huh? <laughs> yeah, those days are gone, man. We're not bringing, those days aren't coming back. No time soon. We should do a, uh, a watch fest of like, we'll start with uh, Star Trek. Then we'll go to Ambulance. And then we'll go to 2001 Space Odyssey. Oh, God, that's so long. <laughs> 2000, dog. I can't even, I can't even stomach it. It's that slow. And I love slow films. It's yeah. super slow. And then we'll yeah. go to Transformers. Right. <laughs> and watch our brains explode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Back and forth. <laughs> All right. You guys, that's it. I mean, I don't really have anything else to add to this. So mm -hmm. you probably already saw Ambulance at this point. But if you haven't, I mean, it's an interesting film, I guess. It's it's new. It's just some groundbreaking cam work. At the same time, it's an assault on your fucking senses. So it's up to you <laughs> if you want to take that in. Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon. Please all notifications and vote this up. I'm Jabby Koi. This is... Hey, it's your boy, Fidel. Peace out.